performance, windage tray, and crank scraper I developed. Uh, both of these items were developed for the IA motor, which I have one right here. Unfortunately, it's all buttoned up. But there's your IA2 block, and the Kaufman MR1 will also work. This particular engine here is an aluminum rotted 421 I stroked with a 4250 crank, forged crank. Uh, it's for my own car. The two items will basically keep a lot of the oil down into the pan, get rid of all that flying oil, adds about 15 horsepower, and the oil control is, is, the, is the best deal. I developed this pan so it would work on everything, stock blocks, the IA and the MR1. Uh, it utilizes all three of the main caps, or you could just use the two of them. Um, I usually like to get a screwdriver and bend the pan inward carefully, of course, and get some of the oil to scrape, like the factory windage tray. The, the crank is turning this way, so we want to get the oil out right away here, which will go down into the oil pan, and then it will come across and then all these louvers will scrape the oil. So basically what you want to do is get the windage tray bolted down. These are 5 16 header bolts. I think they're for like a Chrysler, like a small block Chrysler or something. Um, you can use ARP, uh, whatever, but using the 7 16 head um, basically allows the small socket to get in the, in that window real good. This setup also does not have a dipstick tube. I have two crank scrapers, one with the tube and one without. Um, basically there is a plug. I used a quarter inch NPT and plug the dipstick hole. I'm going to use a Canton oil pan over there that has a external dipstick so we'll use that that's the uh, Canton road race type pan 15452 use a lot of them they control the oil real well too I have my gaskets already pre-glued and that way there's no slippage on that so when I'm all done I can bolt that on uh, the crank scraper has been clearanced and that's all on so what I'm going to do now is basically make sure that the rods or rod bolts are not touching. I want to keep a, a pretty good distance away. Yeah, we got plenty of room with this particular setup. Even though they're aluminum rods. If there is any clearance issue, I usually get a Sharpie. And if the bolt would be there, I would mark it off. You could actually just get a screwdriver and pry this, um, this louver back, and that works. So now that this everything's cleared, I'm going to remove the pan, or the windage tray, rather. And then I will... Um, basically bolt it back on. The only thing I forgot um, in testing, I usually just bolt it right down, but I recommend, highly recommend, using 5 16 lock washers underneath these bolts, and that way there won't be any movement, and you'll be good to go. It's a real stiff windage tray. You can see this is a four bolt main with program caps. 
as a shot of the windage tray. I designed it right like that so it'll clear splayed four bolt main caps, which aftermarket and the IA block has. And uh, even with these aluminum rods, I didn't have to use any spacer. I also make little square spacers in different thicknesses um, that I can shim it up. I had to shim the IA motor because that has a 4.5 inch crank and that one did require some shimming and it also required uh, some of the louvers to be moved uh, even though it's an eagle rod uh, that much stroke brought the crank out further this is a 4250 stroke crank so you can see how I have the right there you can see the distance of clearance for the crank weight same with that one usually like to keep uh, 25 thousandths minimum I've gone as much as 60 they say the closer the better but you're talking just a couple of weights this whole thing is going to scrape oil and you can see the clearance I redesigned this so it would clear uh, the aluminum rods and the rod bolts and all so you can see the you got plenty of room there. And that's it. I'll put this back on, put the oil pump on, and button this uh, motor up.